CVEs are of significant importance in cybersecurity, right? The system provides a method for publicly sharing information about vulnerabilities and exposures. If you scroll on cybersecurity LinkedIn for a few minutes, you begin to see people with things like 15 times CVEs or 25 times CVEs in their bios or taglines, whatever they're called. These people wear these CVEs as badges of honor and rightfully so. They found a vulnerability somewhere and they disclosed it and it was published as a CVE. As someone who's been going through the OSWE, I've gotten a certain perspective on white box penetration testing and so we are going to start doing some CVE hunting ourselves. But first we need to learn how to. The mayor, or Joe Hell, I think that's how you pronounce his name, has a couple of blog posts on this and that is where we're going to be getting started. So let's get into reading and see how we can get started with CVE hunting. I won't actually be doing anything, just reading. And then maybe in a couple more videos, we'll actually go through the processes. Okay, here we are, CV hunting tips. I'll put the link for this in the description. This is the first one I'm going to be reading, CV hunting tips, 000. And uh, the title is Finding Projects. Introduction, there is a fly. Let's get into it. Bug hunting in the eyes of companies like Hacker One and Bug Crowd is all about impact. It's been beaten into people's heads that low hanging fruit issues aren't accepted or aren't worth your time. While many of these issues are absolutely securities and best practices, the platforms will tell you that they are informative, don't apply, or any number of other excuses as to why they aren't valid. So here he starts off by telling us that small security risks and best practices are still valuable information, right? In comes Hunter Dev. I've signed up to the platform already. I've submitted a couple of things. <sighs> we'll get into that later, right? I've been using Hunter Dev for a couple of weeks now. The promise of the platform is to help secure projects that are kept and maintained on GitHub, which means open source, which also means you have access to the source code, which means we get to put our OSWE skills to the test, right? Some of these projects are self-hosted, others are self and or web-based. Regardless of these circumstances, many of these projects are run by a skeleton crew with limited resources and a ton of pride in their project. The projects are labors of passion, works among friends or there to assist small businesses with low cost alternatives and they pay a few bucks too. And those circumstances are why Hunter Dev is a great place to go to if you want to break away from much of the triage battles fought on the large platforms and the issue CVEs to boot. I have no idea what that means. The issue CVEs to boot. Okay, let's move on. The curve, right? There is a stipulation to get started. There's a learning curve with bug hunting on GitHub repos and open source projects. If you lack system administrator or web developer experience like he did, like me, Mr. Joe Hell, Mr. Mayor, it can be a challenge to find projects that you are able to install with your experience level. I can tell you firsthand, the projects that a lot of people aren't hunting on on HunterDev are absolutely difficult to install, even on a Linux server. It's so difficult, it's insane. So I understand it can be an utter nightmare to install some of these projects and many of them are built out for people who understand server provisioning and configuration. Not, not us, we don't know that, right? But alas, a solution. With the curve out of the way, let's consider a plan moving forward. Hunter Dev has a ton of listed projects on the site that can be tested against. Some of them are turnkey and others are the pain in the neck talked about above. So these are some of the projects that are listed on the site. And then he goes on to say, I've had success with some projects listed on the website. I found one such project looking through the previous community activity link, passing through the projects I found. So let's go ahead and uh, look at Hunter Dev for a second. Okay, so this is Hunter Dev. There is a bounties, which is the project calculator. If you put a project, it shows you how much is eligible for a payout when you find when you find a vulnerability some of these projects 2000 bucks upwards i mean 2000 up to 2000 bucks what am i saying up to 2000 bucks woocommerce 75 bucks and different languages different compilations and whatever server side frameworks apache go php javascript all that fun stuff so you have a large variety to choose from and then if you go to the leaderboard here you just see 30 days, 90 days, all time. I don't know why it's not loading. But yeah, these are the leaders. This is the leaderboard. It shows you 
accuracy xp all time 30 days just for the past 30 days but if you go to activity like he said mr johel you get to see some of the reports that have been submitted for different projects and the best thing about this platform is the fact that you can read the reports you can read how someone did it and maybe try to replicate it in a different project right everything is there for you to see so there aren't any excuses you can filter by language filter by substring you can search for repos that actually aren't listed on the website right but be careful with that because some people don't want their stuff tested but considering it's hosted on github i think hunter dev has a way to get around that i think we can go to like the faq or something and see um we can report privacy policy no let's the best way to contact a maintainer use our advisory chat feature once a maintainer has been signed up to the platform they will be notified of a new chat okay i'll put it somewhere on the screen if i find it afterwards but yeah you can go ahead and github search for something you might want to hunt for hunt on and then search for the repo see if there's anyone else that has hunted for that stuff and you'll find it there are a ton of things being reported a lot of cves being granted sometimes you have to ask um, the project if they want to give you a cv or not because even if you find something critical they might not automatically give you a cve i've seen some of mr joe hell's reports and um stuff like that not being given cves until he asks for a cve but that is the first article we're going to be looking into let's get into the second one which is hunting tips 001 and uh, we shall end there this is unverified password change this would be a small or p4 if you go on a hacker one bug crowd and whatever but uh he got a cve for this one right in today's article we're going to be talking about a super easy to find vulnerability covered under cwe 620 if you don't know what cwe means look it up basic stuff right unverified password change at the end of the article we'll go through the hunter dev submission process and what to expect from the submission to validation and beyond using one of my previously reported findings users authenticate to applications multiple times a day oftentimes users will use a password that is meaning to them such as a boyfriend or girlfriend a pet or something else some applications sometimes applications require a password to be changed on a rotational basis and users will be moving from spring 2022 exclamation mark to summer 2022 exclamation mark to fall 2022 exclamation mark and beyond other times the password could be completely irrelevant to them and they are simply using a strong password password changes no matter the purpose of the password change it's incredible no matter the purpose of the password change it's incredibly common to need to do so when we think about the web application pen testing which is how i refer to bug hunting for the most part we try to think from the perspective of an attacker. When we think about an authenticated access, we're considering how an attacker is trying to gain a foothold and what the hell? My screen is black. Okay, you guys can't see that. When we think about unauthenticated access, we're considering how an attacker is trying to gain a foothold. When we think about authenticated access, we're thinking about how the attacker got there and what they can do. So a good take, unauthenticated access, how the attacker can gain a foothold if they are authenticated how did they get there and what can they do so what does an unverified password change look like here we have a password reset form set password enter password confirm password right can you spot the issue here as we think about this is supposed to be a password change right so you're in the application you're in the application and you want to change your password usually applications would ask you to put your previous password first but as you can see here this one is not asking for that this one this one is it's an issue some people would skip and uh depending on where you report this bug you might get p4 you might get informative you might get uh nothing they don't really care about it but i'm pretty sure people would care about this right and so if you report this on bug crowd hacker one whatever you might get something but it's very little so you might as well report this on uh 100 dev and get a cv right can you spot the issue 
As we think about the web application security and the, and the perspective of an attacker, we can clearly see the problem in this instance. Let's theorize for a moment. Jaina stood up from their workstation in an office without logging out and Bill, bad guy, in the next cubicle sees it. Bill jumps onto Jane's computer, clicks the change password button and changes the password without knowing Fred's current one. Ah, we went from Jane to Fred. I think he got the names mixed up here. Jane, Fred, where did Fred come from, bruv? Anyways, in this case, Bill bad guy was unchecked in changing the password because there is no second method of authenticating the person actually changing it. When Jane comes back, they can no longer access the web application and Jane is unable to do their job duties. Okay, Jane is back, not Fred anymore. What should we do? As a developer, it's vitally important to consider every action in an application not only from the user perspective. And uh, I think I will end here for today. It's been 12 minutes already. I'll make a part two for this so that we just continue reading the articles that Mr. Mayor has, the mayor has on Medium so far. And um, we'll continue from there. But if you did like this video, if you would like to get into CV hunting, maybe collaborate, join the Discord. Link will be in the description below. I will catch you in the next one. Please subscribe.